Namaskaram. Welcome to Api Gurus. I'm your host, JK. Today we have an eminent guest with us to discuss about a statement made by Tamil Nadu Governor Arun Ravi. He said that uh, Tamil Nadu should be called as Tamaragam and uh, he has some reasons behind it. And we'll just find it out with our guest, Balagautamanji. Namaskaram. Namaste. How are you? Yeah, fine. Doing great. Okay. Good to have you on the show again. I guess this is the second time you're offering and uh, we're really happy to have you on the show in Pekurus. I guess we know that uh, the kind of work you are doing on the ground for Hinduism, we really appreciate that from Pekurus. Hope people are watching you and following you. If anybody you're not uh, or do not know about Balagautamanji, he has his own free TV uh, that has been uh, capturing a lot of information that uh, people from Tamil Nadu should know and even from outside. So just coming back to the topic, Arun Ravi Governor, TN Governor, uh, Arun Ravi said that uh, there is a lot of attempts made to carve out Tamil Nadu from India, which means a secessionist approach is being seen. And he said that is not healthy and uh, Tamil Nadu or Tamaragam is part of India and that's how it should be seen and we should strive for that. What, what is your opinion? Uh, that's absolutely right. I mean, uh, it, this is uh, what everyone knows. If he has got a little knowledge about history, uh, the perception which is now being created in Tamil Nadu is uh, Tamaraham rather. I want to correct myself. It is Tamaraham that it is after the advent of the Britishers that, uh, you know, a country by the name India has evolved. That itself is, a, you know, this is the height of ignorance, I can say. Then uh, the, uh, the question that we need to ask immediately, in 1600, when Britishers came to this land, the name of the com company, East India Company. If the Britishers uh, uh, came here, and if they really, they have unified this country, how come the name East India Company, they could have, uh, you know, uh, christened their own company? So before the advent of the Britishers, the name India already existed there. And uh, this is, um, I mean, uh, it's uh, a stupidity of the highest order, what is being uh, propagated in the state, number one. Number two, that we need to understand, okay, um, even uh, as far as our people are concerned, Quran is more scientific than your Mahabharata or Ramayana or Vedas, right? And if you accept to this view, then you are an intellectual. If you don't subscribe to this, then you are an idiot of the highest order. This is what the narrative that they have set in. There are two hadiths that you need to understand. In the two hadiths, it mentioned that conquer India. There are two hadiths which say that India needs to be conquered. So if at all there is no India, then how who you are going to conquer? So... It is a religious text which says that there exists a country by the name India. And this is something that I mean, people in Tamil Nadu, they need to know. Because they are dancing to the tunes of these jihadis and missionaries. Because none of these Dravidian uh, you know, intellectuals have anything uh, in between their ears. Nothing. So uh, they are rank stupids. Uh, so whatever the jihadis say, whatever this JNU say, and uh, they just... Uh, you know, parrot their opinion. None of them have any uh, background in research or anything else. So that is what uh, the Honorable Governor has pointed out, that it is always a part of, uh, uh, it is not a part of the nation. It is the nation, sir, because you have to say that there is no division between Tamil Nadu and other part of the country. It is a part of this great nation itself. And uh, if we don't accept these external evidences, then you have to go through the internal evidence, what evidence Tamil offers. Purana Nuru is the oldest, one of the oldest Tamil Sangam literature, the early Sangam literature. And uh, there are uh, difference of opinion. Some say it is 5th century BC. Some say it is 1st century AD. Some say it is somewhere around 3rd century BC. But most of the scholars agree that it is before the birth of Christ. I mean, I'm not sure whether he has born or not, but it is an understanding that he was born 2000 years back. I mean, that is again, 
that is a thought history. Okay. So in that Purana Nuru, it is mentioned, Vadadu Panibadar Neduvarai Vadakkum. That means from the snow capped mountain to the sea is the country. That means Akanta Bharat was there in Purana Nuru, the earliest Tamil literature. So, what Tamil says, what Tamil uh, literature says, that this country is one. There is nowhere in uh, any Tamil literature or in early, any early Tamil uh, uh, references of a separate entity by the name Tamil Nadu. And this is one thing that we need to understand. Uh, our Honorable Governor has uh, put forward this uh, particular thing in a different context. What he said today is uh, it is better to call Tamil Nadu as Tamil Raham. That will be more appropriate than calling it as Tamil Nadu. So one thing that I want to <clears throat> mention here, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, mentioning a place by the Nadu is separate nation. Because even inside Tamil Nadu, you have Nanjil Nadu, you have Kongu Nadu, you have Tondai Nadu and very Nadus. So it doesn't mean that it is a separate country. But he says that it is appropriate to call Tamil Raham. And uh, uh, one MP representing this uh, Dharmaburi constituency, he often tweets in Tamil and mostly if he is going to tweet more than a line, you can find the five to six mistakes. And that is his knowledge about Tamil. And he calls himself as a custodian of Tamil. And uh, of late that he has mentioned that there are mistakes coming in his tweet because he is now learning Tamil. So uh, then you can understand what is uh, mean about their knowledge or understanding about Tamil or Tamil culture. And uh, the sad part, they are calling themselves as a messiah of this language. Anyway, he uh, said that uh, he used to many derogatory words against the governor. And he said that uh, Blade Ravi, uh, Rowdy Ravi, Panparag Ravi, Kava Ravi, Ka Ravi. And there are many uh, ways I can call you. But that, those things are not appropriate. You need to be called as, called as Governor Ravi. And this is a tweet that he has put up uh, in his Twitter space. And he says, since you need to be called as Governor Ravi, Tamil Nadu should be called as Tamil Nadu, not as Tamil Raham or something else. And he is just, I mean, you know, uh, comparing an analogy between these all these, uh, you know, derogatory meanings and then uh, Tamil Raham and Tamil Nadu. I like to respond to that uh, member of parliament. It is an accident that Tamil Nadu has, uh, it's an accident in Tamil Nadu history to elect uh, such uh, lunatics as uh, parliamentarians, you know. And uh, then earlier I mentioned about Purana Nuru, which is a 5th century BC. There, there is a mention that is say, Vayyaha Varaipil Tamilaham Ketpa. So Purana Nuru calls this area as Tamilaham, not as Tamil Nadu. Yudhikadal Veli Tamilaham Velanga. This you can see in Paditu Patru, which is 1st to 2nd century AD Tamil literature. Here the place is mentioned as Tamilaham. And then again you go to Sarapadiharam, that is the epic. It is not the other one. Here it says, Yimilgadal Varaipil Tamilaham Ariya. Uh, this is something you can find in Selapadiharam. And again, in these three, I mean, uh, even Selapadiharam, they call Yalangodihal as a Saivet because this is an argument that I am seeing from Saivet side. And the other two are Sangha literature, which are very close to Vedic things. So since in our Tamil Nadu or even in the JNU campuses and other places, anything Vedic, is just uh, unacceptable. So, I have to quote from Manimekalai, which everyone calls it as a Jain literature. Somebody even call it as a Buddhist literature. I mean, there are difference of opinion on those things. But anyway, no one says that it is a Hindu literature so far. So, I am going to quote from there. It says, Jambu Divunul Tamilaha Maringil. This is what precisely the governor is calling today. It is not from the Hindu writers of Tamil literature. This is from the so-called Jainist Itihas. I mean, uh, uh, by what we call is Manimekale. So, Jambu Dweeb, 
Tamarakam is a part of Jambu Dweep. And this is what is there in Mani Mehanat. And this is what precisely the governor has called today. And I wish that our lunatic MP has to just to go through these things. I mean, I don't I mean he can't uh, understand this because he doesn't know Tamil. That is a problem. So he can't understand what is written there in Tamil literature. So this is what the governor has said. And you can see in all our Sankalpa mantras, we say, Janbu Dvipe Bharata Varshe Bharata Kande Meroho Dachane Varshve. So inside the Jambu Dvip, south of Meru, in Bharata Kanda, and this is what we are to, I mean, every day that we are chanting in our Sankalpa Mandra. And this was precisely there in Manimekali in Tamil literature. And this is what the Honorable Governor has spoken today. For this, such a derogatory remark by a parliamentarian, calling him as a, uh, you know, a rowdy, calling him as a loafer, calling him as a panparagwala, and saying, you can't be called like this. You have to be called as Governor. Likewise, calling Tamaragam that this particular place as Tamaragam is derogatory. And this is what the quotation of the MP is. I don't know why uh, no cases are filed against him for uh, using such references against the Honorable Governor. And this is something, uh, you know, it's a, a sickening part of the state. And I mean, I have to uh, honestly say the Governor has come as a savior of Tamil Nadu. And if this governor was not there, if some other, you know, Chapawala was there as a governor, these Dravidian wolves could have thrown the state into doldrums. Right. So uh, we know what you, the governor said, what the MP said. We also know that there has always been an attempt since the government uh, took oath that uh, some element of secessionism is always in place. I uh, we remember one MP saying that, you know, we still, the, the dream of Tani Tamil Nadu is still alive and we have not given up. What do you make, make out of that? Look, uh, these statements were not coming prior to this Jalikad. And all these parties were, uh, I mean, all these uh, secessionists and everyone were dumped. And no one was seen anywhere else speaking all these uh, when these uh, secessionist overtones. All these things started, they all picked up by various missionary groups and uh, left-wing extremist group initially. And uh, there was a vilification campaign systematically done to fan the secessionism by these groups. These groups worked for DMK and they made a pupil government here. So actually this government, DMK, you, I mean, it is not the government setup. This government is the mask. Actually, it is run by these secessionist forces like the jihadis. I mean, I call them the triple M's, Maoist, missionary and Marxist. Maoist, missionaries and Muslim. And this is the axis which is running the government. And DMK is just a mask. And, and one uh, assembly member, and a support, DMK supported member, Ishwaran, who belongs to the Congo Makal Kachi, uh, he quoted from uh, the earlier governor's speech, that is a Prohit speech, where the Jai Hind was missing in him, he was missing in his speech. And uh, he celebrated it like anything. He said that this is the trend Tamil Nadu has set up. That means that if the Jai Hind, now the Tamil Nadu is not accepting Hind. So he said that it is a moment of joy. And one missionary um, priest by the name Jagat Kaspar, he was clapping in a TV show. Look, this has come up. And this is how he executes. And all these things happened in the TV. And again, the chief minister of the states, state, he started calling it as a union government. He never said it is a central government. And when he called it union government, all these media, I mean, mostly this leftist backed media and these are I mean, uh, fringe political groups and this 
triple axis they started shouting that yes it is a union like united states or united kingdom where many small fragmented kingdoms they have made a country so india is not a unitary nation india for some convenience these groups these small uh, nations they have joined and they have formed a nation so this is the statement made by them and this is what is going on in this country and the popular uh, debate which is going on in the television sets that before the advent of the britishers you don't have the country by the name india and some of the muslims said that after the moguls the concept of nation has come to this country and these are the arguments which are going on and these arguments were supported by the ruling party and that is the height of it and that is where now, now we have to ask this question in 1600 the british came to this country so the britishers came to the country everyone knows that they came here yes to grab this land and to loot this land but in the guise of business so to do business they have registered a company the name of the company is east india company so if the Britishers have made this country, then how come they named the country even before the arrival as East India Company? And this is a fundamental thing that you need to ask. And Mughals came. And this is another argument. There are two hadiths. Those hadiths says that you will get heaven if you invade this country. Two hadiths are there asking Muslims to invade this country. They use the word Hind. So where this Hindu comes from? So it existed even before the Mughals. Because I don't quote anything from the Vedas. Or even I don't quote Indica. Which is 300 years prior to the presumed birth of Jesus Christ. I don't go by that. Because our people don't believe. Because if Quran says something. Or if a Westerner says something. Then only we will accept. Other things we won't accept. So only I have quoted from these two things. So this narrative is planted systematically and one thing and this is one thing that each and every parliamentarian needs to speak in parliament whatever that we have spoken today because this is unfortunately happening in our parliament when this DMK MPs are shouting like this there is no MP from the side of BJP or any national party to defend these overtones in the parliament and all these idiotic things which are not substantiated they are coming in the headlines of the newspapers because the people there in Delhi, because they don't see India be, be, you know, below India. That is a problem with some of the national parties. So they don't know what is there in Tamil or what is there down south. So, I mean, P gurus may take this message to those MPs to counter them even in this field. And this is what I mean. I mean, I am expecting P gurus to do. And another thing that our MPs need to mean, uh, nationalists needs to understand. Look, in 1956, the state is born. How it is born? In 1956, it is India that has gifted Tamil Nadu to us. That is something we need to understand. The state of Tamil Nadu bordering from Kumri Pundi down to Kanyakumari, and from Coimbatore border to east of this way of Bengal. Look at this particular landmass. Samasthanam of Ramanadaburam, Samasthanam of Shivaganga, Samasthanam of Pudukotai, and then a part of Travancore territory, a part of earlier British Madras presidency. These things were carved out, and the state of Tamil Nadu was made in 1956. So this Tamil Nadu is gifted by India. It is not the other ways that Tamil Nadu has, I mean, you know, joined to form India. No, the India has gifted Tamil Nadu. It should be the other way around. And this message needs to be sent across. And this is one thing that this governor is repeatedly trying to do. So I appreciate he is the messiah of the state. Right. I guess we too believe that he is a savior, messiah of the state. And he has come at the appropriate time to Tamil Nadu. And he has made the right statement all the time. Uh, thank you very much. So once again, I just want to remind people uh, that Balagotamanji run Shri TV. 
do subscribe to Street TV as well as uh, to P Gurus. If you like this show, you know, do subscribe, share, and like. Thank you very much. Thank you. Namaste.